Hai hai hai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now we are in the subtopic number 4 for chapter 1 which is surface integral of vector field. Some book use flux integral. So, uh, it's like uh, the application of the surface integral is actually going to apply it's going to you can going to find the flux of the uh, flux integration so in uh, if you want to google in the internet um, want to know details about the space integral you also can find by using the word flux okay so introduction so as a definition a uh, surface integral is about an integration of a function over some surface as in three dimensional space okay so basically you're going to apply double integral to do the to do the surface integral okay so uh, physically uh, if the vector field represent the flow of a fluid okay so the surface integral will represent the amount of the fluid flowing through the surface this is actually the the physical meaning of the surface integral you have some vector let's say the fluid flowing through the surface so you can know the amount of the vector or the amount of the fluid flowing through the surface in a simple word maybe i can say that you actually want to know the surface area where this area is flowing is flowed by uh by a vector so vector is flowing through the surface you can know the surface area of uh, you can know the area of this surface all right so you will given a vector okay so you of course in integrate it you have to make sure the function is in terms of vector, uh, in terms of scalar so you will uh, you will do the dot product of the vector with the n normal vector of the surface n is the normal vector of the surface okay of surface all right so this is the formula of the surface integral you will do double integral f dot n ds the ds is the integration form it depends on the surface that you're going to integrate uh, it uh, it can be in Sharpian form, or, or or maybe in in terms of the uh, polar coordinate form. All right. So basically, in our syllabus, we cover the parametric surface, two kind of par two kind of surface, which are parametric surface and also non-parametric surface. For parametric surface, we have cylinder and sphere. Okay. While for non-parametric surface, we have paraboloid, triangle or tetrahedron, and also cuboid. So the difference between these two surfaces is just in terms on how you apply the normal vector. Okay. So for parametric surface, the normal vector you that you're going to use is this formula: gradient s over magnitude gradient s. While for non-parametric surface, you will base on this uh, table. Okay, this table actually you can find in the textbook, uh, table 2.4, page 74. Okay, so in uh, base, uh, to apply this formula, the table 2.4, it's based on the equation of the surface. If the equation is in terms of z, uh, if the equation is z in terms of x and y, you will use this. And it also based on the orientation of the end. It could be a positive or it could be a negative. Okay, so we will discuss this uh, surface integral for both type of parametric or for both type of surface in the uh, example in my next videos. Thank you. All right, we're gonna want to solve the parametric surface. Uh, probably I have. Two um, example. One is for cylinder, another one is for uh, sphere. Right. So the question asks you to evaluate f dot ds as here. If you understand, s is represented as the surface. So even though you just write f dot ds, so you should understand this is actually f dot n ds. 
So factor is y i plus z j plus 2 x k and s is the surface of the region bounded by the cylinder x squared plus y squared plus 4 between the plane z equal to 0 and z equal to 3 in the first octant. So you have to sketch the surface s first. Okay, so it already mentioned that the cylinder is a first octant. So if you want to sketch it, Okay, x, y, and z. So first often from 0 to 3. z 0 and z equal to 3. So very easy. So you have first often cylinder, z equal to 0, z equal to 3, and you have at the back x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and this one is x squared plus y squared equal to 4. Alright, so first step. First step, you have to find n. n, for the parametric surface, you have to remember, okay, the n for parametric surface can be found by using gradient s over magnitude gradient s. Please remember this. For parametric surface, to find n, is by using gradient s over magnitude gradient s okay right so find gradient s it's gradient s is you partial differentiate the surface surface given in the question is x squared plus y squared equal to 4 you're going to in the evaluate this surface because it said that this surface is the region bounded by the cylinder x squared plus squared equal to 4 between this plane. So the surface that you're going to save, that you're going to solve is just the surface of x squared plus y squared equal to 4. So this is the surface that you have to solve. You're going to know the amount of vector flowing through this surface only. Okay, so gradient S. So Partial differentiate the whole function in respect to x, you get 2x, you put i, okay? Partial differentiate the whole function of s respect to y is 2y, d. You don't have z, so we just stop here. You understand? And then magnitude of the s is, you take 2x squared plus 2y squared. And then square of that. You will get 4x squared plus y squared. So, square root of 4 is 2. And then, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 based on here. Okay? So, this is 2. So, you will get 4. Therefore, n is equal to 2xi plus 2yj over 4. Four, or you can simplify it to be 1 over 2 x y. You understand? Okay, right, this is n. Then, step number 2, you find f dot n. f given in the question is y i plus z j plus Z X A two X K. This is F. Okay. The product with N N is one over two X I Y J. Okay. So you will get one over two. Sorry for the mistake. Okay. So I should put zero here. Okay. So it will give you 1 over 2 x, y, z, y. And 0, the power of 2x is 0. Okay? So this is f dot n. Okay? So next step number 3 is convert the f dot n to polar coordinate of cylinder. Okay, why we have to 
convert polar coordinate of polar coordinate of cylinder because you want to make sure the equation the equation is easy to solve. Okay, so it will be easy for you to determine the limit if you convert it into the cylinder into polar coordinate of cylinder. Otherwise, the equation will be uh, the solution will be difficult to be solved. All right. So now, based on polar coordinate of cylinder, check in your book. X is equal to R cos theta, Y equal to R sin theta, Z is equal to Z, and BS is equal to R BZ D theta. This is polar coordinate of cylinder. Okay, so you're going to convert, you're going to convert uh, this, the F dot N, into polar coordinate of cylinder. All right. So it will be the new f dot n will be one over two. Okay. X is r cos theta. Y is r sine theta. Z is z. Okay. And y is r sine theta. Okay. So maybe you can simplify it to be 1 over 2. Uh, I want to change it to be, uh, okay, R squared cos theta sine theta Z R sine theta. Okay. All right. Now we're going to determine the limit of the integration. Okay. So you're going to integrate 1 over 2. Okay. R squared cos theta sine theta plus Z R sine theta and DS is this one R DZ D theta. Okay. So the limit. So now you can see that the integration will be respect to Z and theta. So these are these are should be substituted. Remember, you're going to integrate respect to z and theta. So we don't want that to make the your, your solution in terms of r. So what you have to do is substitute the value of r. So r in this case is equal to two based on the equation based on the based on the original question just now. It's equal to three, sorry. Okay, so Sorry, equal is equal to two based on the equation based on the question given. So it will be two square is four times this r times this r. Okay, so two power of two is two. Okay, two power of two is four times two is eight. Cos theta sine theta plus this is two times two four four z sine theta dz d theta. All right, now, z, what is the limit of z? z is the height of the cylinder. So, by based on, directly based on the question, it is zero, based on the equation of z. So, the equation of z is zero, two, three, okay? And the theta, because it is first octant cylinder, so 0 to pi over 2. Okay? Please make sure you understand. The most important thing, you understand how to do n, and then you know how to convert it into polar coordinate, and of course, you should know how to determine the limit. Alright, so now you're going to integrate it. 1 over 2. Mm. 8 cos theta sine theta plus 4z sine theta dz d theta z is 0 to 3 theta is 0 to pi over 2. Actually, you can change. You can put the theta here, dz here. It depends on you, but make sure the limit also will be uh, changed. This is for z and this is belong to d theta. Okay, so the integrate this, this is by using integrate 1 by 
part by part this is you can integrate by using substitution method okay substitution method and this one is very straightforward integration so please make sure you understand how to do the substitution method so let me straight away how to do this 1 over 2 okay to integrate z will be 8z cos theta sine theta plus 4z squared over 2 sine theta 0 to 3d theta. You can see I still remain the value of theta because I just integrate respect to z. So substitute 3, it will give me 24 cos theta sine theta and this is 2 9 times 2 is 18 sine theta 0 will, will not give anything okay now integrate the theta this one will be using the substitution method so I take this as the u so differentiate u as a negative sign so I will get negative 24 cos squared theta over 2 plus integrate sign is negative cos so negative is 18 cos theta 0 to pi over 2 and remember you have to substitute the limit using radian okay use radian okay then you will get the final answer which is 15 okay this is for cylinder thank you all right now we turn to example number two calculate flux okay remember flux is surface integral for f equal to 2xi plus 2yj plus 2zk across the surface s which is an upper hemisphere upper hemisphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 16 all right upper hemisphere if you want to sketch upper hemisphere okay so y and x upper hemisphere so means that it is located above z equal to zero so this is hemisphere okay x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 16 all right so first step is we find n remember n for the parametric surface is gradient s over magnitude gradient s this is n for parametric surface okay okay so first of all find gradient s Okay. Partial differentiate the whole function of s. This is s now. Okay. Respect to x is 2xi. Respect to y is 2yj. Respect to z is 2zk. This is gradient s. Magnitude of gradient s. It is 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 2z squared. Okay. square root of this you will get what 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 4z squared and this is 2x squared plus y squared plus z squared from the equation here it is equal to 16 so 2 square root of 16 is equal to 2 times 4 so it is, is it therefore n is equal to 2xi plus 2yj plus 2zk over 8 which is equal to 1 over 4 xi plus yj plus zk right n okay next next step is find f dot n so f given in the question is 2xi plus 2yj plus 2zk. Okay. 
to Z pick. Right. Then dot with the N is 1 over 4 XI plus YJ plus ZK. So you will get 1 over 2 X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Okay. Step 3, convert to polar coordinate of sphere. Okay. So check polar coordinate of sphere. Polar coordinate of sphere. Check in your textbook. Last page. Okay. X is equal to R sine theta cos phi. Y is equal to R sine theta sine phi. Z is equal to R cos theta and DS is equal to R squared sine theta D theta D phi. Okay. Right, so now we're going to convert this f dot m to the polar coordinate of sphere. So what you get is 1 over 2. X is, okay, maybe I, I want to write it here maybe because it, it, uh, it's required uh, more space. So X is r squared sine squared theta cos squared phi plus r squared sine squared theta sine squared phi plus r squared cos squared theta okay you can simplify this to be r squared sine squared theta cos squared phi plus sine squared phi plus r squared cos squared phi this is equal to one so you will get 1 over 2 r squared sine squared theta plus r squared. Sorry, this is theta supposed to be. Sorry for my mistake. This is also theta. Let me write again. That is this, yeah? Okay. Right. So cos squared theta. So you also can simplify it to be 1 over 2 r squared sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. This is also equal to 1. So you will get 1 over 2 r squared. Okay? Clear? Try to simplify it because if you not simplify, you imagine your, your solution will be difficult. All right. The next is the next. Okay, next you uh, going to integrate it one over two r squared r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So this is ds, right? This is ds, and this is f dot n in polar coordinate. 1 over 2 r squared. Alright, so what is the limit? Okay, uh, maybe I can simplify it first. You got like 1 over 2 r power of 4 sine theta d theta d phi. Remember, we just want to integrate respect to theta and phi, so r should be substituted. So r in this case is based on the equation of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 16. So r is equal to 4. Substitute here. So you will get of uh, 1 uh, divide 1 r r is power of 4 power of 4 2, 5 6 divided by 2. So you get 1 2 8. So this is actually 1 2 8 sine theta d theta d phi. Okay? So your equation will be simpler now. So theta is the limit. Okay? Remember the, the hemisphere just now? You have hemisphere. 
So theta is the limit from this to this, so just 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2. Then phi is the limit horizontally, so 0 to pi. Okay, so integrate it 1 over 1 to 8. Integrate respect to theta first, integrate sine is negative cos theta 0 to pi over 2 d phi. So substitute 1, 1 to 8, 0 to 2 pi, negative cos pi over 2, minus minus is plus cos 0 d phi, cos pi over 2 in radian is 0, cos 0 is 1. So you will get 1 over 1 to 8 0 to 2 pi d phi. Then integrate it phi respect at 1 respect to phi is phi 0 to 2 pi. Sorry, 1 to 8 phi. So this is equal to 1 to 8 to pi minus 0. So it is equal to 2, 5, 6, this is the final answer. Okay, that's all for sphere. All right, we have example number three now. This example is on how to solve the surface integral or to how to find the flux the integral for the non-parametric surface. So we start with this example, determine the flux across the surface Z equal to 4 minus x squared minus y in the first octan, given that f is 0, negative 2, negative 1, a vector with downward orientation. Alright, Z equal to 4 minus x minus y, you can see no power of 2 in the Z, x and also y, so means that this is a tetrahedron. Okay, you can see this is tetrahedron or triangle in three dimension. Okay, so it's very easy to sketch this. It's like, okay, you have z, y, and x. Okay, so connecting z and y with a straight line. z and x is a straight line as well. And x and y with a straight line because all the points connected with a straight line, no power of 2. Alright, so point here is 4, this is also 4, this is also 4. Okay, so first of all, first step, find n. As usual, similarly as solving the parametric surface, we start with find the value of n. If you remember, in, in finding uh, n for parametric surface, in parametric surface, parametric parametric surface, cylinder and sphere, and also sphere, to find n is by using gradient s over magnitude gradient s. This is in non-parametric surface. But for parametric surface, you have to use this table. Okay, this table can be referred in page 74, page 74 in the textbook. Okay, all right. So now, refer to the question again. This question said the surface z equal to 4 minus x squared minus y. z equal to 4 minus x minus y. So we have three columns here, z, y, and x. Okay, z y and x so we have z here so you have to refer the first column z equal to d in terms of x and y so the question said the surface is downward orientation downward orientation means that it is negative orientation if you use your right hand rule you uh, and 
and your your thumb has to be downward orientation it must be downward orientation you can see the other hand the other fingers is in clockwise orientation means that it is negative orientation so to find and for this question it has to be based on this formula okay so and for this question for this problem will be based on del z over del x i plus del z over del y j minus k okay because it is downward so downward orientation means that it is negative oriented why we use the first column because the surface is given in terms of z uh, it, with the question with the equation of z in terms of x and y all right so how to get the end partial differentiate z respect to x so you have z equal to 4 you have z equal to 4 minus x minus y to differentiate partial differentiate respect to x is negative 1 right i and then plus partial differentiate z respect to y is negative 1 as well k and you just put Okay, like this. Okay, so it is equivalent to negative i minus j minus k. Okay, very easy. Just follow the formula. Partial differentiate z respect to x to i. Partial differentiate z respect to y. You put j and minus k. Just put k. Okay, just put k. Just put k. Minus k or plus k depends on the formula. Alright, this is n. Alright. Step 2, define f dot n. f given in the question is 0, negative 2, negative 1, a vector of 0, negative 2, negative 1. And n that we obtain in the step 1 is negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. It's like negative i minus j minus k, right? So this is actually, maybe I can rewrite it as, as negative 2j minus k dot with i minus i minus j minus k. It's just equivalent, okay? So how what done, dot product of these, you will get 0 plus 2 plus 1. So this is equal to 3. Very easy. So now we're going to integrate 3 ds, okay? So what will be represented, what will be replaced as in parametric surface, if you have a cylinder, if you have cylinder, you will use polar coordinate of cylinder, right? Obviously, if you have sphere, so you, you, will, you, you will use polar coordinate of sphere. Now, this is parabola. We don't have polar coordinate of parabola. Don't, you don't have to use polar coordinate anymore. So, what we have to do is now just convert the triangle. Just now, we have triangle z, y, and x. We have a triangle, sorry, a triangle in three dimension, a triangle dimension, a three dimension, a triangle, okay? Converted, convert this to two dimension where you just have plane y and x. So what happened is this equation is z equal to 4 minus x minus y, right? So in two dimension, we don't have z. So you will have 4, in two dimension, you just have 4 minus x minus y. So it's equivalent to x plus y equal to 4. So this is actually how it looks like in two dimension. X plus Y equal to 4. Or you can rewrite it as 4. Y equal to 4 minus X. Okay, a straight line with slope negative 1. This intersect of Y is 4. Okay, you got my point, right? Inshallah. Okay, so now, in order to determine the limit, okay, so, you are going to integrate 3 respect to dy dx or dx dy is depends on you on your choice. Okay, because you already converted this into two dimension. It is 
this is the most easiest uh, is this the this is the easiest way to solve the double integral the so, so the, so the, inter, the surface integral by convert the three dimensional surface to two dimensional surface okay this is this is 3d convert to 2d okay so it will be easier for you to determine the limit all right now you want to determine you want to know the limit of y see how i do i will make an arrow so that you can e you can see clearly that the arrow is start from the y equal to zero right the line on the x axis is y equal to zero so the limit the lower limit of y is zero and it goes to this line this line this line this line okay this line is y equal to 4 minus x so the upper limit is equal to y equal 4 minus x okay lower limit is y equal to 0 okay y equal to 0 upper limit is the line of y equal to 4 minus x how about the x x you have to take the smallest point of x smallest point of x which is 0 Okay, take point must be point. Okay, smallest point. Okay, point of x is zero. This is the smallest point. The biggest point of x of this region, of course, this point, the point here. Okay, the point here is the smallest point of x, which is zero. The point here, the the biggest point of x, which is or 0 to 4 okay remember this has to be the biggest point okay this is the this is, has to be in terms of function y in terms of function okay this has to be in terms of point okay so this is the limit to integrate the tetrahedron okay Next, so this integrate directly 3 dy dx, this becomes so easy now. Hopefully, you already understand how to do the, the limit 0 to 4. Okay, very easy now. So, integrate respect to y is 3y 0 to 4 minus x dx. Okay, now substitute the limit. 3 4 minus x minus 0 dx so you will get 0 to 4 12 minus 3 x dx now integrate respect to x you got 12 x minus 3 x squared over 2 0 to 4 so it is 12 times 4 minus 3 over 2 4 power of 2 so the answer is uh, I think 24 if I'm not mistaken, the answer is 24. Okay, so the plots of, of f across the tetrahedron z equal to 4 minus x minus y is 24. All right, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's move to example number four. Uh, evaluating the surface integral of flux integral for non-parametric surface. Okay, so we have now a vector field f equal to x i y j plus z k across the surface z equal to 16 minus x minus y squared above z equal to 0 with a positive pointing normal. Alright, so this is a paraboloid. Okay, paraboloid above z equal to 0, 16 minus x squared minus y squared, so means that it will be... above z equal to 0 and so this is the parabola okay parabola z equal to 16 minus x squared minus y squared above z equal to 0 so this is the surface that you're going to integrate okay you're going to know the norm the, the surface integral or the flux integral across the z equal to 16 minus x squared minus y squared 
Right. So this is non-parametric surface. So in the first step, as we know, you have to find n. So how to find n? It's still based on the this formula. We have z equal to dxy. We have y. We have also x. But now because of the surface, is z equal to 16 in terms of x and y. So we have to refer to this column. Then the surface is, is mentioned that it is a positive, positive, it is positive normal, so it based on this formula. So n will be based on negative del z over del xi minus del z over del yj plus k. Okay, so what is the z? z is 16 minus x this is our z 16 minus x squared minus y squared therefore n will be partial differentiate z respect to x is negative to x i partial differentiate z respect to y is negative it is negative to y j and you put k therefore it is equal to 2 x i plus 2yj plus k. This is n. Remember, for non-parametric surface, you have to base on the surface given in the question and you have to base on the normal vector. If it is negative, if it is downward, you have to use the negative formula. If it is positive or, or it's mentioned as upward, you have to use the positive oriented formula. Alright, next. This is the first step. Second step, find what? F dot n. So F given in the question is x, y, and z dot with the uh, n that we obtained before is 2x, 2y, and 1. 2xi plus 2yj plus k. So what we have is 2x squared plus 2y squared plus z. Okay? Alright. So Remember, we are going to do the double integration only. So you have to make sure the variable in the function that you're going to integrate is just, this cannot be more than 2. So what, what, what we have here is x, we have variable of y, we also have variable of that. So you have to consider, considering the z that we have in the question, which is, 16 minus x squared minus y squared, you have to substitute into the f dot n. Okay, so your new f dot n will be 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 16 minus x squared minus y squared. You substitute z, okay, substitute into f dot n. Okay. So what we have is x squared plus y squared plus 16. Okay, this is the simplest f dot n. So you have one variable, we have two variables only, x and y. So you can you can integrate it using the surface integral. Okay, now so you are going to integrate x squared plus y squared plus 16 ds. So what is the ds now okay remember previously we do tetrahedron okay what we have what i've shown you you transform the 3d tetrahedron to be 2d triangle remember you have tetrahedron you have tetrahedron convert to 2d you have a triangle this one just triangle so you have you use dy dx remember you use dy dx or dx dy to integrate the tetrahedron but now this is paraboloid okay we are now solving the paraboloid okay listen carefully what i'm going to tell you the paraboloid that we ha we have in the beginning we have paraboloid okay like this okay this is three dimension i want 
to convert it to be two dimension as well. This is the easiest way, okay? So you bring this parabola in two dimension consists of y and x axis as well. So you you imagine that your eyes is here. You look the parabola from the z axis. What you can see is the parabola is just a circle. You agree with me or not? You should agree. <laughs> All right. If you look from the above. If the parabola is viewed from the above, you can see the parabola is a circle. Okay, so this circle consists of radius and angle. That's radius and also angle. Am I right? Okay, so in order to integrate this, the ds has to be based on the the ds is be based on the polar coordinate of plane ataupun polar coordinate of circle we have polar coordinate of cylinder previously we also have polar, polar coordinate of sphere and we also have polar coordinate of circle or plane okay so now we convert the three dimension parabola to two dimension so we have a circle so to solve this circle now to know the surface integral of this circle have to use ds in terms of polar coordinate of plane or circle okay all right okay now so we are going to integrate uh, we are going to convert sorry yeah uh, right okay we are going to convert the f dot n this noun to polar coordinate we, the original we have this original uh, f for n, so we're going to convert to polar coordinate to polar coordinate of circle. Right, so we, what we have is uh, r squared cos squared theta okay, plus r squared sine squared theta plus 16. Okay, polar coordinate of circle of plane or top of plane of circle we have x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sine theta and z is equal to zero and ds is equal to r dr d theta okay refer to the formula given in the in the book okay all right so now simplify this you will get r squared cos squared theta plus sine squared theta plus 16, this is equivalent to 1, so you just have r squared plus 16. Okay? So, it means that you are going to integrate, you are going to integrate r squared plus 16, ds is r, dr, d, theta. Okay? Alright, so now my question is, do you have to substitute the value of r? Okay, if you still if you still remember in the previous example of cylinder and also sphere, I I told you that you have to substitute the r because the integration is not in respect to the r. Okay, but now we have the r here, so just remain the r like this. Okay, so what you have to do is just set, uh, extend it. So you have this. Okay, so the limit okay, now respect to R and also theta. So limit of the circle this now we have x squared plus y squared. Uh, sorry, the limit of R. Okay, between the limit of radius. Okay, we have the equation of z equal to 16 minus x squared minus y squared and also we have z equal to zero where this is located at z equal to zero substitute this into the first equation so you have zero equal to 16 minus x squared minus y squared so you have x squared plus uh, plus y squared equal to 16 am i right okay you have x squared plus y squared equal to 16 therefore radius is is 4 okay 
So the radius will be 0 to 4. The angle, obviously, it is a full circle. So no issue about this. It is 0 to 2. Okay. So please integrate this. Okay. Integrate. Solve. Integrate this. Uh, it is very easy to solve this. Your final answer will be will be equal to three eight four five. So this is for parabola. Thank you. All right. I would like to make some conclusion based on the examples that we have done uh, earlier. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, so, so as we know, to for surface integral or flux integral, you actually want to know uh, what we want to know is actually you want to know the amount amount of the amount of vector such as fluid, okay, uh, flowing through the surface okay so the surface could be a parametric surface or non-parametric surface so you should know that parametric surface uh, for example is cylinder and also sphere for non-parametric surface we have paraboloid triangle or tetrahedron and also cuboid so your syllabus only will cover these five type of surface okay right so the step to solve surface integral flux integral so basically we start with finding the normal vector okay so you should remember how to find the normal vector um, so for the parametric surface parametric surface to find n is gradient s over magnitude gradient s okay and then for non-parametric surface The N is based on the pitch 74, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's say uh, you have uh, equation of Z equal to uh, 16 minus X minus Y, where the normal vector is positive oriented. Okay, positive orientation mentioned in the question. So the N will be based on the formula of negative del z over del xi minus del z over del yj plus k. Okay, all the all the information based on the question, so it is based on the page 74. The normal vector is based on the page 74. Right. Then after you get n, find the f dot n. You do the f dot n. Make sure after you do the, the f dot n, the function has only more it has uh, not more than two variable has more than i mean sorry this is not correct make sure the function of f dot n not more okay not more has not more than two variable let's say for example you have uh, f dot n is x squared plus y squared plus z for example so this is not correct. So you have to substitute. You have to substitute the equation z, okay? The equation z, so that you will have the function in terms of x and y only, okay? All right. After you get the f dot n, convert the f dot n in polar coordinate. This one is only for cylinder, sphere, and parabola. So you have to know that cylinder has its own polar coordinate of cylinder. Okay. So sphere, it has polar coordinate of sphere. While for parabola, it has it has to use polar coordinate of plane. Okay. All the polar coordinate can be found in the uh, textbook. Okay. All right. So step number four. After you convert to polar coordinate, or maybe a sum of problem, we don't have to convert to polar coordinate, so just remain as it is. Then you determine the limit of the integration. Okay? The easiest way to do to determine the limit is by converting the surface to two dimension surface. Let's say you have paraboloid. Okay, you have paraboloid. 
in three dimension. Okay, convert is in, in three dimension. You convert to two dimension, it become a circle. So is this is it easy? It's more easy to solve the circle rather than the parabola. If you have the trigon convert to be a triangle in two dimension, so so the limit will be easy to uh, in, uh, to do to determine. Okay. After you have the limit, correct limit, then you just solve the integration to get the final answer. Okay. All right. Inshallah, I hope. All the example given is easy and is easy for you to understand. And please do the exercise, inshallah. Uh, for any problem, just uh, contact me, okay? Thank you. Assalamualaikum.